more to be desired either than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the heart. All right, praise the Lord. We are back for our second part two of our Holy Ghost Forum in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Praise God. Just talking about uh, uh, things of the Spirit, the Word of God, and uh, just having some conversation. If you're here with us, let us know you're here. Leave a comment. We appreciate that. And uh, this will also be posted in uh, on YouTube in a week or so. So praise the Lord. Well, <coughs> we've been talking about different uh, about protocol for healing. Um, we talked about King Asa a little bit. Uh, you know, one of the protocols I believe we have for healing is to seek the Lord and to put the Lord first. And one thing that King Asa knew to do, in fact, he commanded all his people to do, was to seek God with all their heart. And uh, God gave Steve them rest the from all their enemies. And uh, I think one uh, one big solution to problems, to uh, difficulties, to trials and troubles is uh, put everything aside every once in a while and just seek the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> James said, is any afflicted among you? Let him pray. And prayer is just uh, an act of uh, seeking God, uh, bringing God into your life. I mean... It's. I, I thought about this, and and uh, what's the difference between sitting and watching a television program and thinking about God, and just turning the TV off and, and going into another room and really talking to God? God says there's a difference. Yeah. God wants us to put Him first. God wants us to seek Him with all the heart, with all our heart. And uh, I don't know if, you, if anybody wants to comment on that. I've thought about that, though, that uh, God makes a difference in those. Doesn't he live in our heart? Yeah. yeah. Aren't we with him all the time? Yeah. When are we not conscious of his presence? I know from a child I've, I've had that consciousness that God yeah. was with me, God was in me. It's hard to relate to the Old Testament people who had to seek the Lord because he was apart from them. Yeah. In our dispensation, we're inseparable. Right. It doesn't sound the same. Yeah. Seek the Lord. I think a person, a Christian, needs to walk according to what's in their heart. Learn to follow your heart. Yeah. And not necessarily what all the voices around you are saying or some of the ramblings of your mind. Brother Hagen made a big deal of learning to uh, recognize the source, whether it comes from your head or your heart. And I think it behooves a Christian to practice that. Now, where did that come from? Did that come from my head or did that come from my heart? No. And you learn to reject some of the nonsense that comes from your head. Praise the Lord. I think a lot of uh, the, the Christian walk is just learning to walk and live in the Spirit in all that we do. Yeah, Amen. We tend to divorce what we call the secular from the Spirit, but you can't do that. We live in a material world. Yeah. We are material. You can't escape the material. And God did not escape the material. He decided to inhabit it. Yeah. And so this material being is spirit. It has a living, breathing spirit inside of it in which is the living spirit of the living God. And so whether I am pounding nails or driving a car, or whatever I'm doing. I ought to be in the Spirit. I ought to be one with God. That shouldn't require me to separate no. just because I'm working on somebody's floor, or even if I'm watching the television. 
Yeah. Now, I'll grant you some of the stuff that's on the TV, <clears throat> you have to separate yourself to watch it. If you're listening to God, he might tell you to change the channel. We don't watch that stuff at my house. Right. So, in fact, we watch hardly anything. But the point is, uh, I think it was Brother Hagen that said, uh, if a person would learn to talk right, they wouldn't have to pray so much. Hmm. Yep, that's one. He said it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So seeking the Lord has a whole different connotation for us. Uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. Well, he has been found. He lives right here. He's not lost. We're, I'm not separated. I'm one with him. I'm one with him as Jesus was one with the Father. I'm one with him. That's a powerful revelation when you really think about. Uh, yeah. Yep. He's really with me in everything it. I do. You yeah. know what I mean? That doesn't keep me from doing a, something stupid once in a while. You know what I mean? And it doesn't keep you from doing something special every once in a while. I know right. in the early 80s, mid-80s, uh, Larry Lee taught uh, uh, about um, uh, could you not watch with me one hour. Yeah. So he talked about Pray the hour of prayer. prayer yeah. um, Dutch Sheets, not Dutch, his brother. Uh, Tim. 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 Uh, he's talking about 15 minutes of prayer. So uh, uh, that can be a high place. Yeah. So so there's not a, that can be running away from God. Yeah. Well, I, explain. I think explain. I, I kind of think you know when Jesus says uh, to pray without ceasing, that's being in communion without ceasing, continually with God. Yeah. And I think that uh, which we sh- should, but like when you said you, um, God is with you when you pound nails, or God's with you when you cleaning out a stump or whatever, okay, he's there. Uh, I think there's times when uh, uh, God calls you or draws you to him for just him, yeah. just him, not nails and not dishes and not washing clothes and talking to him while you're washing clothes, but just him. He just wants your full attention on him, and I've, uh, he's done that quite a bit with me over the years which I love, <laughs> okay? and uh, But it doesn't mean, mean that it's different or, uh, how can I say, that he wasn't there before. It's just that he's calling, uh, uh, calling you to be specific. And it's just like in a relationship. You just can be out um, uh, putting a garden in, okay, together, or you can be in, in, at home sitting next to each other on the uh, couch having an intense conversation. Okay, when we talk about relationships, so I don't think it's so much like seeking God because He's already there. He's always there with us because of Christ. But there are times uh, that are specific where, for some reason, He wants it, or when you are um, over um, consumed with something that you want to get rid of, you fully go to the Lord, like with no other distractions. Um, looking, talking, waiting on him to hear for something. So it's, uh, we don't like to have to seek him to find him. Right. Because <laughs> he's right here. We don't have to find him. You know, he right. found us, okay? He's right here. And I think that's a difference in the Old Testament and the New Testament. They had to seek God, okay? Um, they had to, in a sense, just get rid of all the distractions because they didn't have the spirit like we have. And uh, they had to, uh, separate in that sense I but we question. still need to separate in certain things I, I, I think there is an aspect though where we train our s- hearts and minds to stay focused uh-huh. on him that's what I'm talking you know uh, brother Lawrence wrote a little book yes, years I mean, ago yeah. called practicing the presence of God yeah. which he was a kitchen worker mm-hmm. you know basically but people literally would come to watch him wash dishes and just observe the presence of God and the power of God on his life as he washed dishes. Mm-hmm. Wigglesworth one time said, uh, someone asked him, how often or how much do you pray? He says, I never pray more than 10 minutes, but I never go 10 minutes without I'll praying. Pray. So, <laughs> yeah, there's, so a, there's an aspect of training our hearts, training our minds what was your question? to stay focused on these things. I was just going to ask how you practice doing that. Doing what? Yeah what you just said in regards to staying in contact with God. He's, uh, I'm conscious of God continually, continually. He doesn't, he doesn't, 
I don't care what I'm doing, I'm talking to you and I'm conscious of him. Okay, it's uh, always that way. It's been that way yeah. with me from day one with God. He's, um, he's always there, always. I'm always <coughs> aware of God, always. But there is a sanctification in spending time in his presence. In Second Timothy, Paul, Paul talks to Timothy and he says, uh, in a great house there are many vessels. And those that separate themselves from certain activities, well, certain things, you know, God can work in their life. Well, uh, Jesus said it between Martha and Mary that she yeah, has chosen the greater, okay? Where Mary was set at his feet continually, where Martha was always busy about doing something. Um, and he said it wouldn't be taken away from Mary, okay, that she would have that. Um, but the, the, like I said, there is a difference in the Old Testament and New Testament how we relate to God. There is something to be yeah. said, though, you know, when you mentioned that, for going to conferences or having special gatherings, or even like we're doing here, we're focusing on yes. talking about the things of God, uh, which there's nothing wrong around, about sitting down and watching a movie with friends and family and, and talking about what you're going through, but then there's times like this where we would have church on a Sunday That's where right. we... Focus on worshiping God. So, well, you can do so the there's same both aspects. Yeah. You can do because specific. I remember when I was a young Christian, I had called everybody. Somebody had cancer in the church, and we were just getting. That was a charismatic just starting. And um, she had uh, been diagnosed with cancer, and, and we had an all night prayer, worship and prayer for her, because she was going to the doctors the next day or whatever, and it was gone. Okay, it was like. It was focused on her need at this, you know, coming before God for her. So I don't know how that happens except the Holy Spirit moves on you to do something like that. And um, so I do take specific time with God in certain things. But like um, the one time I was praying for the president and he started talking to me about a, a member of the, ch the church was having a problem. And I ended up texting all the stuff and sending it to pastor. So God will talk to you. You know, you think you're doing something for him or doing what you're supposed to do. And he interrupts and does something else. So yeah. you just have to rest in the Lord. Every, but the, everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Just like fingerprints. God's big enough to commune with every person in spite of their differences. Uh, and I think we get in a rut, if I can use that word, uh, when Smith Wigglesworth becomes the pinnacle of success. Right. And that's what everybody's trying to achieve. Nothing could be further from the truth. That's right. Uh, God loves you Excuse and is me. fully able to use you right where you are sure. and uh, he will and we need to understand that he does and and flow with it and agree with it and and not be anxious about who we're not exactly you know pastor i think a lot of works are going to be burned up because of people trying, trying to, to be become somebody else. Yeah. like right. somebody else or something instead yeah. of just relating to God as you are and let him. I can remember also when I was first learning things of trying to correct something in uh, my life, God wasn't even focused on that at all. Yeah. So I wasted all that time, energy, and doing whatever yeah. when he was focused on something else. Okay, and I remember, I don't know if you ever heard of Charles Trombley years ago in the charismatic movement. He, he was ministering wherever I was, and he called us all up, and, and when I went up to, he said, um, he turned, whatever we were talking about, he turned around and said, what is God saying to you? <laughs> okay, what is God saying to you? Yeah. And uh, that's what we need to focus, if we're going to focus on anything. What is God <clears throat> saying to us? Because everything else we do, if he's not in it or it's not his time or purpose or whatever, it's going to be burned up because it's not of his spirit. And we're just stumbling, in a sense, stumbling tr through, just like Paul says, we only know in part. So we have to grow up in Christ and grow into that relationship with God that you come to a place where you know exactly what God's saying to you at the time he's saying it and moving like that. That's what, <laughs> if I want to aspire to anything, it's that, okay, that I would be so um, 
in tune with God, that I'd be walking one-on-one -on -one with him in everything and not out somewhere on a limb somewhere else. I, and, I like what Pastor Gary said, you know, if there's one thing that God's not interested in, and that's making clones yes. of us all. Yes. All you have to do, you don't have to look very far, look to creation, uh, the difference between a deer and a bear and you look at all the attributes that a bear would have and then even look amongst the bear family yeah. the grizzly bear the black bear the brown bear the koala bear the, the polar panda bear. bear the yeah. polar bear and god is all about the polar bear <laughs> the polar bear yeah <laughs> oh, brother anyway he's interested in variety and we're all unique we all have special gifts and if you spent now now here's the other aspect of it I love to uh, the variety when you look in the body of Christ you look at our history you look at a Francis yeah. Francis of Assisi Sissy. we have a Catholic Church yeah. that's uh, uh, the Church of Francis of Assisi but if you look at his life and his lifestyle uh, uh, Brother Lawrence uh, John Wesley uh, Jonathan Edwards uh, um, Evans Roberts and and uh, right. you know just on and on Daddy Seymour and and uh, Daddy Seymour uh, William Branham Kenneth Hagin and you look at all these varieties and how God used each one of them uniquely how God worked through each one of them uniquely and and then understand as you mature I think is where we come to a place of maturity where we realize yeah they're them and well, you're you here. and God is going to use you in such an excellent way. Yeah. And as you seek him, if you put the same kind of right. sanctification, separation, consecration yeah. into your life than any of those did, then you can bring forth the fullness yes. of your blessing and the fullness of who you are. And, and uh, of course, we look at the broad, broadness of creation, but Paul laid it out in chapter 12, uh, just the body, the variety that's in the body. My hand can't be an eyeball that's my right. eyeball can't be an ear and it's all they all have unique and different functions which is just uh, it, it, it's just flabbergasting it's it's amazing it's uh, I had the good fortune to get saved about the same time a co-worker got saved mm. we both did had the same job worked at the same place and uh, I come into work one morning and uh, he said, well, Rudder, what's the Lord been saying to you? <laughs> I just looked at him and I, I didn't know what to say. But it made me think. And I began to realize that if you listen, God talks. Wow. Yeah. He, he does have something to say. And it would be unusual that you didn't have commune with, communion with him ongoingly. So over the years, I've ask that question and the Lord has been gracious that through the years this one or that one will begin to share what the Lord's been saying if you find a buddy that will share what the Lord's been saying to them hmm. oftentimes you'll learn more from that than you did from the big time teachers and all of the courses that you took yeah. the Lord has a way of bringing truth through his people that aren't even trying to teach or aspire to some yeah. uh, pulpit ministry. Just the revelation that they get from the Lord is just as much a revelation and just as true as the revelation that, uh, you know, Earl Roberts or somebody got. Sure. And uh, those have been some of the richest uh, times, those kinds of fellowship. Yeah. And when you have time that you can spend with somebody like that and, and you get going on what the Lord is. And the, well, that's one thing we're doing here, Pastor Gary, is just bouncing off of each other and hearing from each other. what, And, and this is why, again, you know, uh, it's so valid and so important and necessary that we have tongues and interpretation in the church where we open it up to the floor and follow the protocol laid out in chapter 14 where you have either two or three individuals give utterances in tongues. 
Why would that be necessary at all? Why can't we hear it all from the pulpit, all from the pastor? Because God uses each person uniquely, and he has something to say Amen. through those individuals. Amen. Uh, such a powerful gift in the church, and yet the church, for the most part, is neglected. Well, if you listen uh, to little children, a part of that. If you listen to little children sometimes. Um, Profound. They, uh, what was that? Profound. Yeah. I, I told you about my granddaughter. Yeah. You going to tell that again? Yes, I am. Oh. <laughs> Get your towel out. <laughs> she was talking to my son. They were riding along, and uh, she said, you know, Dad, um, I think Nana just went on a long vacation. <laughs> and that one of these days we're just going to hook up with her again. Oh, and that, to me, was profound. Yes, yeah. yes. Because, what did you learn in Bible school was better than that? Yeah, really. You know, like uh, a nine-year a nine-year-old telling her dad. Her dad, he said he wasn't even he was not expecting it at all. You know, and, and she said, I, I, "Well, first she said, you know, Dad, I, I, a lot of times I feel like I'm dreaming that that her nun is gone because they were pretty close." And uh, and then she said, "But you know." I figured it out that I'm not dreaming that she did, and I think this is when, when she said, I think she just went on a long vacation oh. and we're going to hook up with her soon. Praise mm -hmm. God. So, I think it's also important, Pastor, what you're saying, that the body of Christ, that individuals mm -hmm. need to understand what, you've, what we just transpired in, in our conversation. Yeah. That each person would understand that we all need to understand that out of my innermost beings, out of your innermost being, will flow those rivers of living water. Yep. That God has you there. You're, you're important. Each person is important. And it talks about the body, you know, the arm and the leg. And we all know that. And that's nice to know. But it's important that the body of Christ would come to the realization we are all significantly important. That he... Um, Absolutely. And that's so Absolutely. vital. And I've often thought that... Uh, we're looking at uh, six to seven billion in population Earth worldwide, and there are, there are similar traits that yes. that individuals have, but ultimately everybody's an individual. Everybody, yes. and that's that's one more expression mm -hmm. of God. That's right. On the earth, yeah. when a new baby's born, when yeah. uh, when you meet a new you know a, a new friend or a new individual. Um, you have the opportunity to access another aspect of God, of God that yes. you haven't Absolutely. seen previously yeah. or prior. You know, when God uh, sent Jesus here to represent him, which he was God in the flesh, and he was. That's exactly yeah. what he did. And we knew he was anointed by God to go about doing good, healing all the oppressed of the devil. And that's what he did. It's what he did. He yeah. was a man on this earth in, as a God. In a, but then God sent him here for that purpose. Yeah. And then he leaves, and guess what he does? After he left, what did he, he do? He gave it to each one of us. Mm -hmm. So now we are to do as Christ-like, to do those things as yeah. well, is that we represent, we're to imitate him Absolutely. And that's our goal. That should be our goal to strive to cause me to hear his loving kindness in the morning because I'm going to trust in that and then cause him to show me what to do. Yeah. I, I think, think of my family and we've had four daughters. Would I get rid of one of those daughters? That's right. No, I wouldn't. No. They, they are so unique. That's right. And so special and so gifted mm -hmm. in, in who they are. And when we think of general, uh, of our family or the general population, everybody's unique and offers something special Absolutely. to add to the plate, Absolutely. whatever it may be. But then God said in chapter 12, God has set some in the church. Yes. God has given us even gifts above yes. the, the normal giftings that we have in in our families and in society 
and he's given and even above and beyond uh, the body of Christ he's given <coughs> some Gifts. apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers uh, gifts of helps, workings of miracles. Uh, God has given these special ones in the church. And like you were saying earlier, Pastor Gary, uh, wow, uh, if there's any crime we've committed in the body of Christ, it's excluding huh. the gifts that God yeah. wants to bring uh, to the church to bring blessing. To equip the saints. If you're in a service, a gathering of Christians, for the purpose of worship and you feel like God wants to do something but you don't know what it is you just know God God wants to do something I know it but that is unknown and that's when you give an unknown tongue but I don't know what it is exactly that's why it's unknown that's you give the tongue what right. does that do it opens the door and allows God to come into the service mm -hmm. But now, you shouldn't do it if you don't know there's an interpreter present. So the interpreter should have been designated so that everybody knows if he's there or not. Now, if I know there's an interpreter there, I know I can give the tongue, I don't have to hesitate, I don't have to worry that nobody will interpret it, I don't have to worry <coughs> that I have to interpret it, I can freely move with the Spirit of God and give the unknown tongue, expecting fully that the interpreter will tell us what it is God is trying to say. What a, what an amazing thing to receive, to have a heart open. Oh, I meant to receive yeah. Yeah. from anybody and everybody that's that's moving, flowing in the Holy Ghost. I was looking again here at Third John, and uh, this is what he said. Uh, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth and truth is manifest, manifest and given to us through individuals. We see another dimension, another uh, uh, shadow of light uh, of, uh, of the truth uh, through each individual. But uh, this is what he says about uh, receiving other ministers and ministries. He says, uh, bring them forward on on their journey after a godly sort that uh, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. Uh, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers mm. to the truth. What did the Bible Jesus say? He said, "And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Uh, there's still a lot of bondage in churches. There's still a lot of religion. There's still a lot of uh, uh, muckety muck and people not walking in truth because we haven't opened our hearts to these ones that are bringing truth to us. Uh, he says, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence yeah. among them, receiveth us not. Now here, here's the Apostle John who says he's not being received. Uh, wherefore, if I come, I'll remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that, that would, and casteth them out of the church. Uh, and he says, basically, beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. Uh, you know, having traveled and itinerated for, you know, more than 30 years, um, I have to say there has to be a correction in some of this stuff if we're oh, gonna yeah. if we're gonna bring freedom and bring truth to uh, to the body of Christ uh, what a blessing it is to to have a gift come and uh, and and even you know from the standpoint of a pastor's gift how many uh, would benefit so much if they'd open their hearts to the pastor's anointing mm -hmm. and the pastor's mm -hmm. uh, For I have given gifts to men, and I have given gifts to the church, and I would that all men receive my gifts 
What a disappointment it is in the church and to me when men reject and refuse the good and precious gifts that I've mm -hmm. given. Mm -hmm. But if men and women will open their hearts to receive all that I have, surely truth shall be established you, and surely freedom shall reign Thank in you. the church, in the congregation, Thank in you. the hearts of men and women. So receive all that I have for you and open your hearts and be not slow to receive that which I've given, but open your arms and embrace the gifts that I have for you. And, it, and, it's, you. and it's so simple for anybody to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's so simple because like we've talked before about how if, if you have a tongue message, you know, you don't have to worry about messing up. Yeah. You know, yeah. because uh, no, but there's something in your heart that that's right. that it's needed gotta, to be it's expressed. Gotta needed to come it's got to get out there. Well, yeah. Why is God it wants to speak? I I agree with what you're yeah. saying. So, and I agree that's true with the Pentecostal experience. Um, why do you think um, I speak to everyone? Why is it still being rejected? Uh, well, let me finish. Why? Are there people, I don't want to say denominational churches, because there are some people in demonic denominational churches that are filled with the Spirit. But there, are, there is a, or should I say, why is it that people have not received? I don't think it's changed from third john I think no no that, that i'm saying to, why do well go ahead i'm sorry to me well i was just saying that there are those that uh that love the preeminence and would shut out others from having a voice or hearing what they have to say or it's similar to king ace's experience where a prophet came well i and, agree that's uh, with the pastor i'm talking about the individual people i'm talking about people who are sitting in the pews but it's the same situation you can't already. have something that you have not been taught yeah you can't get it because there's no faith to have it. Faith comes by hearing, and if but you're why? the word, my question is why? I understand people perish for lack of knowledge. All right. My question is why does the individual person who's sitting in a church Do, don't, uh, yeah, don't aren't, aren't being used in the gifts? Uh, is that what you're well, saying? why or are they not, not receiving. even receiving it? Why? It's are they? carnality. It's it's the works of the flesh. It's and it's the battle we all. It's Galatians where he says the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the well, flesh, so that we cannot do the things that we would. It's the same thing with raising your hands. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it has to do with they, 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 they don't want to accept the fact that, like I just got done saying, you know, if, if you, like Gary said, if you, if you know that, you, you, you asked me that night at the, at the meeting, do, do, you have, do you have the message? Well, I had. I told you. I said I always have a message. You know, it's just I can't come bubbling out with like he said. It's there. You know, it's always there. You know, but you know, you 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 wait till that specific time where it's going to hit home the most, so God can have His voice heard, and then it, maybe those people that you're talking about, maybe they'll grab onto it somewhere along the line. You know. I don't know whether I'm ex asking the correct question. This is, this is the answer you need, okay? In our church, we went for years inviting people to give a tongue or prophecy. And it was like pulling teeth. And uh, if somebody would give a tongue, then everybody waits for an interpretation. Heaven help the poor soul that gives a tongue and there's no interpretation. <laughs> I mean, he'll go and be, he can't come back to the church. You know, it's like he missed God. Everybody knows it. You know, and it just was a bad setup. And, uh, and what would happen is a lot of times I would try to give the interpretation even though I didn't know what it was doing because just in blind faith, you know, just without instruction or anything. But then we learned uh, from Brother Joe Jordan, who was a, an elder in the Goodwins Church, 
and the Goodwins ministered at Rama Bible Training Center on a regular basis. And Brother Hagen said of them, they had the, the best operation of the gifts in their church of any church he'd ever been to. Yeah. So that's that means they must know something. So this is what Joe Jordan taught here, right from the Bible. He said, if any man in uh, chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, verse 27, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it by, be by two, or at the most three, and that by course, and let one interpret. Just one. You have one interpreter. But if there be no interpreter, that means you have to know who that one is and if he's there or not. Yeah. If he's not, don't give the tongue because you don't have an interpreter. But once it's established who the interpreter is and everybody knows if he's there, right. you can give the tongue. You don't have to be afraid. Right. The interpreter will get it. Ideally, the interpreter is normally the pastor because presumptuously everybody trusts the pastor or why would they be there anyway? Mm -hmm. And they might not trust somebody that they don't know very well. But anyway, once the people see that the pastor is always going to interpret, mm -hmm. then they don't get in this religious dogma of what if nobody interprets? You know, it's like, it's like the devil jumps in. As soon as you have some inspiration that there should be a tongue here, the devil jumps in right. to try to scare you off of it. But the fact of the matter is, I believe this gift was uh, assigned or gifted by God for the specific reason that he could cut in to our materialistic meetings that are somewhat confined to our intellect. He can cut in with an unknown tongue that nobody knows what it is except who gives the interpretation Amen. by faith. And so then now God, sometimes it affirms what's going on. Sometimes it takes you somewhere uh, different than where you were. So it's, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful how the, work, how the gift works and how it's set up and what it's meant to be. It's the same as a prophecy. If a prophet stood up and said, said it, uh, it would be the same as a tongue and interpretation. Uh, but the tongue, you don't have to be a prophet to give a tongue. Right, Anybody no. can do it. You don't That's have right. to know anything. You just, and and you, all we have to do is read those three verses to really discern and understand. Yeah. Answer the question, will somebody interpret? That's right. That answer right there. Is there. And an I can... I can uh, 99 out of 100 pulpits do not teach this. That's right. Yeah. The people are ignorant. That's what and, the good one, uh, Dad Goodwin said to a lady at the church who asked, how come the gifts are not functioning in my church? He says, if the gifts are not taught, you can't have them. And that's yeah. what Pastor Gary's talking about. He's talking about teaching this so that the people can understand how to go about what doing what God wants. We have tongues and interpretation almost every Sunday. Yep. Yeah. I just wish the participation was a little broader, but yeah. we're yeah. working on it. Be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even if you don't have that, you know what you said, the, the broader thing. Mm -hmm. To me, if you're a Pentecostal church, you need to have the gifts in operation. That's yeah. just as simple as that. You know, and if and if and if I see in our church I only have one person now uh -huh. because Carol's gone. You know, I only have one person now that will come forth with with a tongue. So uh, it's all right. At least you have that's that. right. As long as you have that, you know, you get, as long as you yeah. got it going. That's that's the thing. You got to get. You got to have it going. Well, you know, if we're gonna have a cake, let's include all the ingredients. Pastor, I have to go. To give Steve and that's what uh, right. that's what verse 26 is saying he says how is it then brethren when you come together every one of you and these are the ingredients five ingredients that's to church. a church service that's right every one of you have the psalm we have a singing we have a doctrine we have a teaching we have a tongue a revelation and interpretation we'll see it Deanna yeah, see you next Bye, Deanna. Yeah. Uh, so Here's the deal. What we've been doing in churches for years, we uh, we get all we get the ingredients together for the cake, 
and we put in the flour, we put in the egg, uh, we put in the milk, but no sugar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, is it still a cake? Well, it's a cake, but it's not the same it would be if we'd had the whole five the ingredients. ingredients. My yeah. sister-in-law did that with a pumpkin pie, and we still won't let her live her down. Or let her live, <laughs> let it her down. live it down. Live it down. Yeah, and I'm just saying, we've gotten so used to in our church services of having church or putting together a service with missing ingredients, a lot of people don't even realize the, the ingredients are missing. But once but, you have those ingredients, you can't go back the other way. It's like having a revival. You can't, you can't replace yeah. it with entertainment. Yeah, exactly. you can't replace it. It's a, uh, it's a powerful, powerful thing. And um, uh, and I believe, you know, as you look at this scripture, you look at this scripture, and I had mentioned, I've said this before, we're going to close here, but uh, I asked Joe, and I asked Ron Smith, who's an associate with the Goodwins, there for a number of years, uh, eight or ten years, um, I said, "Do you ever remember a service where the Goodwins didn't have tons of interpretation in a church service?" And Ron looked at Joe, and Joe looked at Ron, and said, "Not once. We don't ever remember having a service without tongues and interpretation. Why? Because they, again, taught on it. They made room for it. They expected it." Uh, uh, they prepared for it, and so they had tongues and interpretation. The, the charismatic renewal, they always created a spot where there was an expectation for a move of the Spirit yeah. in every service. Yeah, that's true. We had, and actually, uh, of course, I think Brother Hagin mentioned this, but through the 30s and 40s, the Assembly of God and Pentecostal churches, they had an abundance of tongues and interpretation. But today, because we've kind of, we try to correct things, and uh, even in Kenneth Hagin's teaching, he tried to correct a lot of things. Yep. And what he ended up doing 30 years later, we've eliminated the gift almost altogether because, number one, we don't teach on it, and we're, we're unwilling to pastor it and to bring, uh, you know, a lot of brand good order. We're afraid of it, too. Yeah. We, we yeah. had uh, this Sunday, uh, Rob come in early, and... Uh, said, Pastor, I got a word from the Lord. I think I probably need to give it today, but I don't know when or how or what exactly to do. And he was kind of alluding to his more than just one word. And I said, well, I just have a little lesson on Mother's Day. and We got time, you know, just obey the Holy Ghost. So in our time where we're worshiping and singing in the Spirit and we normally have tongues and prophecy and stuff like that, we did have a tongue and a prophecy and another prophecy. And then things went silent, and Deanna gave a word that somebody has a word, and they're supposed to give it now. <laughs> I know when I'm being kicked okay. in the pants. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, Rob knew that was the time, and he gave it. It was a marvelous uh, prophetic word uh, wow. for people in the in the uh, that were here. Wow. Um, so we started out talking about the healing protocol and, and we ended up talking about protocol for the gifts of the spirit tongues and interpretation uh, these uh, forums are set up to help churches help pastors help Christians come together and have church we want to mm -hmm. have church and we want to have church in its fullness praise God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, with that said uh, we are going to be in in uh, well I have a wedding the end of the month. I, I I think it's not the fourth Friday. I think I can still do the fourth Friday the following week. I think that's like the uh, 28th. I think that's the fourth Friday in May. Yeah, 27th is a Thursday, so the 28th is a Friday. Yeah, it'd be a Friday, so I think that's the fourth. I believe it's fourth Friday. Anyway, it we'll is. be in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania with Pastor Dave Landis and... and uh, uh, brother Dave, uh, oh, Gwen, what's Dave's last name? Land. Land. The other Dave. Candolium. Candolium. Pastor Dave Candolium will be with them. So, God bless you. Uh, check us out on YouTube. We've got a lot of uh, videos there, and we'll be back here in.
Murraysville, the second Tuesday of the month in June. So blessings to you. Uh, tell a friend, tell someone about these, and we'll, we'll see you later. Praise the Lord. Sweeter also than honey and the honey.